Welcome to New Life Live with Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's today's host, Chris Williams. Welcome, New Life family and friends. We are so, so glad that you're with us today. We're glad to hang out with you, glad to talk with you. Um, I get to have the incredible privilege of sharing space with just a couple of remarkable people that I get to learn from all the time. One of those is Dr. Alice Benton. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? You're doing good. Mm-hmm. Very good. And Dr. Jackie Mac Harris. Hello. Good morning. I always say, I love, I just Definitely. love the way your name rolls off my tongue. Mm-hmm. Dr. Jackie Mac, Jackie Mac Harris. <laughs> Jackie it. Mac Harris. All right. Been Jackie Mac for a very long time. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we just right. Jackie Mac. All right, Jackie Mac. Hey, what's on your mind? What have you been thinking about? What, what can we mull over to, to, to jump off this show with first? Community. I've been uh, thinking about community. I have a, um, someone that I work with that... Not only do I do couples therapy, but uh, my team does family life coaching with them. Mm. And she had a conversation with me and she started crying and she said, um, thank you for helping me create a village. Wow. Um, Because my family life coaches go into the home. And it just reminded me of how valuable that is. I have a, a sister who isn't my blood relative but we met in college and have raised our children together and lived together off and on for all of their life and we became each other's village she didn't have an older sister my Mm. younger sister lived in another state and so we raised our children together our children are a family unit with Mm -hmm. one another and they're expanding that village and so as we're seeing that people aren't coming back to church and people are still staying a little isolated post-pandemic. I'm just concerned that uh, we've gotten so independent and self-sufficient, we believe, um, mm-hmm. that it's, it's making us sick. We, we yeah. need one another. We were created for a relationship. And I just, I just feel like people have to be encouraged to come back out again and, and to make those connections. I have it on my calendar to do a friend's dinner date night mm-hmm. on third Fridays, just so we can be intentional about connecting with our community. Yeah. I, I wish community were optional. Honestly, Mm because I am just an introvert. I prefer to be alone. I'm just not comfortable with people generally. Uh, But I have bought into the idea, and I now do believe it, that it's it's not optional. If we want to live a full life, if we want Mm. optimal health, and even if we want to live on our spirituality, it is not optional. Community is necessary. And we suffer if we don't have it. Well, well, the human project out of the Harvard University in its like sixth generation now, fifth generation, something like that. It's It's been going on for over 80 years. It shows what leads to longevity and satisfaction. And the number one factor was healthy, supportive relationship. Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of people think that that's a husband or a wife or that they that's a child. But... It can be a friend. It could be colleagues. It, we just need healthy relationships. Well, and to take and a, different le- to levels t- of them. To take the the underside of this, the dark side of this. Mm-hmm. A few years ago, I was asked by a local news outlet about these mass shootings, and this was after the Vegas one, and because we had a lot of people show up from Orange County in, in our office, and I said, you know, I, I can't speak. I I just don't know what all is going on in a person's heart and mind that would lead them to such an atrocious act. But I can see one variable in every single incident. Isolation. Uh God said there was one thing in all of creation that wasn't good. For man to be alone. It was not good for us to be alone. Now, now we can be off and do our silence and solitude, but that is to help us re-engage in healthy relationship and and that's what we're here for and and in fact you know i say this what what is damaged in the dark can all in the dark of isolation can only be healed in the light of community so Mm -hmm. community is so important let us help you we have many many resources to connect you in that way and we'll be back right after this some of the things i was involved with were taking over my life in today's world men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day 
every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal, they're just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. The Everyman's Battle Intensive can help. After seven years, he just in one weekend came back. I completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Everyman's Battle Intensive. He said this is something that every man to go to, married, dating, it was definitely life-changing. The Everyman's Battle Workshop is being held online as a one-day event Saturday, April 13th. Don't wait for him to call. To find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. I just can't say enough of what New Life has done for our marriage. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. I'm Steve Arterburn with the New Life Moment. My mother grew up with a version of unhealthy faith. She believed that her faith vaccinated her and her family from evil, that temptations wouldn't likely come our way, and if they did, that we wouldn't succumb. When her father committed suicide, it seriously shook this false presumption. Yet somehow, Mom managed to maintain her belief that God owed her protection from tragedy. But when my brother contracted AIDS and eventually died, my mother was unavoidably confronted with the fact that her faith provided no supernatural vaccination against tragedy. Her faith was shaken to the core, and she slid into depression. Thankfully, my mom recovered. She recognized and accepted that God didn't owe her a life free from tragedy, hardship, and suffering. It takes real wisdom to discern biblical faith from its counterfeits. I'd like to help you in your endeavor. Please visit me, Steve Arterburn, at newlife.com. And thanks for listening to this New Life Moment. Again, another great, great pearl of wisdom from Steve. And, and I think we fall into these subtle trappings that, you know, making faith something that it's not. You know, that it freeing us completely from all sin and evil in the world but forgetting the fact that it helps us in the midst of those things. And if we build our faith off of one Bible verse or just a handful, but don't keep it in the context of all of God's word, we will be led astray. Yeah, yeah I mean... There's it, nothing in the Bible that would make me believe that being in relationship with Jesus would mean that everything would go well. It's so full of struggle, yeah. so full of hard stories. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, sometimes we do believe that it's the faith that you have that it's going to make you perfect. And that can leave people so confused and disoriented when just a regular tragedy, a, a death happens. Yeah. Well, and I think that this is really important to our support, our love for each other, for community as mm -hmm. well. We look at the Hall of Faith in, in Hebrews chapter 11, and I can say that that, that is not, those are not aspirational lives. Right. Th those aren't living your best life now. Right. right? Mm -hmm. that, that is really struggling through and, and remaining faithful in the midst of some really, really tough and difficult circumstances. And, and to your point earlier, Jackie, is like this is also done with the reinforcement of community of mm -hmm. the people around us. And so find, I call it the tribe. Finding, the tribe. Fi finding, finding your, your tribe. tribe is really, and building your tribe is really, really important. Again, I, I, this begs to mention our life recovery groups. This is a great way to build healthy tribe around recovery and exactly what we say, healing and hope in life's hardest places. Again, you can check out that. You can start one. Mm -hmm. um, we can give you the resources. Just go to our website, www.newlife.com, or give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, and we can get you connected. And speaking of calls, we're going to go to Lisa listening in the Big Apple, New York, New York. And Lisa, you there? I am. Yes, Hi. Thank you for having me. Yes, no problem at all. Talk to us. What's going on? Okay, so I'm like really oh, broken and just devastated. My um, soulmate, I believe he was my soulmate. We were married for 15 years, and we have a 15-year-old child. Um, we divorced three years ago, and I'm still really grieving over it, mm. and he has a girlfriend now, and I believe he was my soulmate. And um, 
I, you know, kind of thought that I felt like God was putting it on my heart to move to Pittsburgh, and he and my son would have moved for me, and I just kind of forgot God told me that. I don't know. And, um, um, yeah, so I, I got confused and I, I didn't move and, and I felt like I was put on my heart that it would be too late, you know, if I waited and. So Lisa, I have a, I have a very random question for you. Yeah, sure. What parent left at what age in your life? Um, no, my mom and dad were still married. Okay, how long have they been married? They were married for like, um, I think 45 years. Oh, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. my assumption or my hunch was uh, wrong. You, uh, How would you describe their marriage? Um, he cheated on her um, most of their marriage. Your dad uh, cheated on your mom most of oh. your marriage? Okay. Oh. Th- well, that's how he left. Okay, that's how he left. He was never in the marriage. Yeah. Right. So what if impact did that have on your mom? Um, she never trusted him. She was always nagging him, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so she had maybe a a hardened and critical spirit, you know, that, that, that mm-hmm. hurt yeah. trouble, that hurt and distrust showed up as, as criticism. Oh, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. And what was the impact on you? Um, on, on their relationship? Yeah. The marriage. Yeah. 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 And your dad's uh, cheating. What impact did your dad's cheating have oh. on you? Um, yeah, I basically, uh, disliked him for a long time and mm-hmm. was mad at him, but then I, then I forgave him, you know, mm-hmm. and I led him to the Lord. So, yeah. Uh, so Lisa, you said you were uh, married to your soulmate for 15 years and you've been uh, divorced for three years. How happened right. you and your soulmate ended up in divorce? I he told me he didn't love me anymore. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I was sick a lot and depressed, and I couldn't do much around the house and and um, complained a lot, was witchy and miserable. And, you know, he um, gave me another chance to change, and I couldn't change because I was still, I had, like, I ended up having like migraines every day for five months and oh. that messed me up. And so it just, yeah, I guess he just couldn't take it anymore. And, were you, were you, know, you, were you cranky and snappy and short or were you just in isolation and unav- uh, unavailable? Um, I don't neither really. I was just really witchy and witchy and, Kind of, yeah, the B word. <laughs> okay. You know, I just was like not. Um, so not kind. Yeah, and then he, you know. And and what made him uh, the soulmate for you? Um, I don't know. He just, I just know he wasn't. Like I just know. And so my question is, do you think, like I missed it, and I'm not going to have another soulmate, or? I, that, think, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, uh-huh. no, you didn't miss it. Um, mm-hmm. There may be some work for you to do um, so that uh-huh. you can connect with yourself, your your own core self, yeah. your, your, uh-huh. your right partner, your mate uh-huh. suitable for mm-hmm. you, whether you call that mm-hmm. a soulmate or something else um, mm-hmm. it, it is out there. But it seems to me like you were being, you were making yourself okay based on whether this person was okay. Maybe a little codependency, and he got tired mm-hmm. of carrying the the load of being a person for both of you, and so mm-hmm. it felt like this is my soulmate because what he feels I feel. But that wasn't mm-hmm. necessarily true because he was unhappy, and you were content mm-hmm. with him being there in that way and feeling like this was your soulmate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you could step back and look at the mm-hmm. 15 years, were, was there work that you needed to do and, and didn't do for yourself? You said you had depression. Were you in therapy? Mm-hmm. Did you do any groups? Yeah. I was in therapy, and I took a lot of, you know, I was on every 
antidepressant mm-hmm. and I and none of them worked and and towards the end um I was on this antidepressant and it made me really confused and that messed me up and I think it just messed up my life you know um yeah it so, just messed up my life so your question of uh did you miss your the boat uh, I, my answer is just going to be no god has whatever is for you is for you and so uh-huh. as you continue to heal um when the mm-hmm. time is right god will send you what's right for you but the focus on uh-huh. another person is probably yeah. not the primary concern right now the focus is on mm-hmm. finding you right Lisa, my heart is real heavy for you, girl, because you've been living in a lot of physical pain for a couple decades, I think. And and I'm going to say something that's going to sound harsh, but I'm saying it because I care about you. You got some low standards for a soulmate, my friend, some very low standards. Uh Now, I don't know the whole story. I just know what you've told us. But for a man to abandon you because you're struggling with your physical pain and Uh depression, and he's off with another, another girl now? That does yeah. not sound like high soulmate quality to me. And so I, I, I wonder I wonder if you have really expanded some of the good attributes he truly does have. And if you're turning a blind uh-huh. eye to some of his coldness uh-huh. and the ways he was not a good right. soulmate and not a good husband to you. And, and, right. and you might also have a limited view of God, that God has this one straight line path for our lives. And if we deviate, that's it. You're done. No more chances. You lost your chance. That is not the way our God works, and thank you, God, that it's not. This beautiful promise that holds me up with all my failures and my stupid mistakes and sticking with the wrong thing for too long is that God uses Mm -hmm. even our mistakes for our good for those of us who believe in him. So it's not a one-shot life, and that's it. You lost your chance. That's not the way God works. Yeah. Right. And Lisa, let me get—I'm going to let you in on a secret, okay? Okay. This is just between you and me. (laughs) I found my soulmate. Okay. Uh-huh. I I got super lucky. I found my soulmate. Do you know what my soulmate uh-huh. was? My soul. Who? My soul. <laughs> because yeah. that mate goes with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. It goes uh, every it and and if I'm not well with my soulmate, mm-hmm. nothing else in my life will will go beyond that wellness. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and this speaks to Jackie's point. When we are uh-huh. in that position and we believe that there is a soulmate, a romantic partner out there that is going to fix our lives, it is a clear uh-huh. indication of an empty missing spot inside of us that remains unfulfilled that that other person is not going to fulfill. Your husband was right. actually set up. He, uh-huh. he was set up to fail before he began. But more importantly, yeah. you were set up to be disappointed before wow. all of this. And my guess is he did right. all the things that you maybe dreamt about, mm-hmm. and um, uh-huh. and that made him seem like um, your soulmate. Your dad, in his choices, abandoned you and your mom in a lot of ways. And uh, oftentimes uh-huh. we grow up and we make up stories about what good would be, what what my life would be like when I'm an adult. And I just wonder if you'd maybe built up a fantasy of what it was going to be like to be married. Uh, and he kind of filled that in the beginning. And then the story you were telling uh-huh. yourself is this is my soulmate. This is my soulmate. Yeah. This is my soulmate. W- well, and, and, right. and these are also indicatives of these things that we call love addiction. Mm-hmm that my life uh-huh. my life will be fixed by someone else simply loving me specifically in a romantic way which is uh-huh. also a clear indication of growing up in a dysfunctional or chaotic home because uh-huh. because what was not reflected back to you especially mm-hmm. by your dad is what it means to be a faithful loving hu- man human being Mm-hmm. And and what right. it means to value, deeply value another person. And to see that uh-huh. person, not just themselves. It, there's, I'm hearing the, the quote, uh, you complete me. And so it's almost as though you felt like he completed you. 
and he he can't uh, because yeah. there's a part of you you still haven't found. It's like the worst relational line in in <laughs> mo- movie lore. You know, you complete me. In the Bible, we see that the two become one. But uh-huh. how is that possible? Because one plus one equals two, not one. Well, we got to uh-huh. change the mathematics. One whole times one whole equals one whole. Mm-hmm. It's multiplication. Right. It's not addition. Yeah. And so yeah. We're, our encouragement, at least, is for you to get into your own work and start seeing a much greater wholeness with inside of you in healthier relationships, healthier community. And I'm gonna send you a copy of um, Intimate Deception, Healing the Wounds of Betrayal uh, Trauma, because that's going to show you what happened to you as a kid and even I think what's happened to you as an adult. Lisa, thanks for calling in and we'll be right back right after this. I came kicking and screaming. The last 24 years. I've been filled with pain. I was violently molested and raped from the age of six to 13. It has changed everything in my life. This weekend for me has been life altering. I have realized that God does love me, that this is my story, and that's okay for the first time in a long time. This is Steve Arterburn, and this is the story of a new life. She came kicking and screaming and now has a changed life. You can be part of offering hope to others as you step out in faith by donating to New Life Ministry. To make your tax-deductible gift, visit newlife.com and click Donate. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or text NLM to 28950. That's NLM to 28950. I was sort of vaguely familiar that the 12 steps had some origination in the Bible. I found life recovery. And one of the things I liked so much was that it had such a broad appeal. It wasn't limited to just alcohol or drugs, that it was addressing a a wide range of problems. At New Life, we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country. They take place online, in conference calls, and in person. And if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. We have startup materials, leader's guides, CDs, Bibles, and more, all with discounts available for groups. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. The 12 Steps have long been a great help to people in recovery because much of the 12 Steps' power comes from the fact that they capture principles clearly revealed in the Bible. The 12 Steps is really a pattern for all of us as Christians. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. Thanks for being with us today. And it's myself, Chris Williams, Dr. Jackie Mack Harris, and Dr. Alice Benton. A.B. A.B. All right. We're, now we're going to go to Nelson, listening in Arlington, Virginia, on YouTube. By the way... We are on YouTube. We're on apps. There's many, many different ways to listen to us. Uh, local radio, Sirius XM, all kinds. And there's a great group of New Life listeners who gather together on the YouTube chat. So if you want to get active in the discussion, that's the place to be. Uh, that makes me nervous. I'm not sure I want to read all the chat comments, but that's my own insecurity. Uh, and so, I'm looking for it to go in and read them now. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, but we really want to talk to Nelson. Nelson, how are you doing today, man? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Talk to me. Well, thank you for taking my call. Uh, uh, the question I have for you is, I, I would like to know if procrastination is related to drug addiction, and drug addiction is consequence of uh, um, a trauma that I received when I was a kid. I was sexually... Uh, molested mm. and abused, and I started drinking when I was 16, maybe, and uh, using drugs when I was 17, 18. Mm. Um, and um, I've been doing drugs, I've been doing drugs for a long time. Nelson, uh, how, how old are you today? I'm, I'm 50. 
You're 50. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my wife left because of my behavior, because of my drinking. And drugs. Yes. I, I wasn't, yeah. because, you know, see, I wasn't drinking that much in front of her, but when I was, when I was by myself, or, and um, I used to go to pick up my kids, and um, before pick pick them up, I was to buy well, a six pack and drinking. For sure. Well, your alcohol use put you yourself and the people around you in danger, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm doing. I'm, I'm also smoking. You know, smoking yeah. pot, and uh, it, it, but everything behind my wife. She did. Yeah. Well. But, well, Nelson, what's the question for us today? Uh, if, if, if I, I, I'm, I'm procrastinating, is, is procrastination a consequence of the, of the drinking and drugging, or a consequence of my the trauma that I received when I was a kid? Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna, I want to hear from my wonderful colleagues. So there is this god in the Greek world called Pan God, um, not not a very nice one. Um, it would oftentimes require child sacrifices, and uh, and and would you know require all these like crazy weird kind of sexual things and animal sacrifices it's where we get the but but a lot of pain and hurt would be involved in the worship of this god this pan god it's where we get the word panic it's also mm-hmm. where we get the word pandemonium a, a, a strange question or a strange incident in the bible where jesus says you know on this rock i or, um, i will build my church and the and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. The gates of Hades was the opening to the area in which they worshiped the pan god. What Jesus is saying actually could also be interpreted, and on this, uh, in my kingdom will stand up against all of the fear and panic that results from the horrific things that people do to each other. And it's faith that was yeah. the rock. So that's a long ways of going down this pathway to say that is your procrastination, it's indecision based on fear, Mm -hmm. carried through from horrific pain and shame that you're medicating through addiction. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. So the question is, did the procrastination come because of addiction, uh, and and yet the procrastination can be a part of your addiction and your addictive behavior. But you may have been procrastinating before that. You may have been the kid who took a long time, waited to the last minute to do their homework. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I also have a friend. I don't know if it's called. It's a consequence of, of the drugs or drinking or, or, or the abuse. Uh, I have a fragmented mind. I, I, I write papers like I have to do. I, have, I need to call the doctor or, or for my kids, and I write a small paper, and then I put it aside and I write a note for, to call my brother and put it aside, mm-hmm. and then I cannot find all these notes that I have everywhere behind behind a, an envelope. Uh, Nelson, and, uh, I'm going to uh, interrupt to ask, how far are you into yeah. sobriety? Uh, well, I, I want to be honest with you, Doctor Alice, because you, you, you're 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 very special to me. You know, and I, I didn't want to call. I had this dream with, with you. You were talking to me in Spanish because Spanish is my my native language. Mm. And I told my brother, and and, and uh, he said, uh, when you dream with a with a with a woman, it's your soul that's talking to you. And uh, I don't know that you know. I don't know where he got that. Nelson, I'm going to go back to my question. I'm glad that I'm special to you. How far are you into sobriety, yes. brother? Yeah, uh, I would say three days. I want to go to AA, but I don't want to... Nelson, uh, thank you. Fail. Thank you for telling us that. That helps us help you better. And mm-hmm. we're going to divert you from the procrastination question to what should I do? What should I do? We're going to come back after the break, and we're going to help you, Nelson. Yes, Nelson, yeah. you're struggling with... Um, uh, unfortunately, a common story, a- abuse that leads us to addiction, that leads us to all kinds of other consequences and painful consequences in your life. So um, we're going to come back to you, as Alice said. Thank you so much for calling in, and we're go- we'll be back right after this. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for over 34 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for your life and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today, living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow. Call 1-800-639-5433. I have given to New Life regularly because I have so many people that I am referring to New Life who so benefit from the ministry. I just can't imagine what would happen in my area if New Life wasn't available to us. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of all eight 100-day devotionals, including 100 days of prayer, 100 days of freedom from depression, and 100 days of peace. There are also ongoing benefits like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, discounts on workshops, and quarterly online meetings with Steve. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. We are talking with Nelson. Nelson has just um, let us in on the pain of his life, um, struggling with drug addiction, losing a marriage in the midst of that, showing up as procrastination, but even going back to some really, really painful childhood trauma. So Alice, what does Nelson do from here? Nelson, we're so proud of you that you have three days of sobriety and the courage to call us to check in about what what do you do about this procrastination? You're on the right track. You're on the right track, but you know you need community to go back to how we started the show to keep you on the right track because nobody has enough strength of will to stay sober on their own and in isolation, especially with what you went through as a child. And so you're going to need to get that tribe, that team around you, Nelson, and it's going to be hard because you're not attracted to the AA groups perhaps or to the system, and yet we know that it works. And so we want to get you connected. Stick with us. We're going to get you connected to people that can go with you on this journey. And I got to tell you, Nelson, the procrastination question, I have never seen a more motivated person than someone who's going after their drugs or going after their six pack, man, they're going to find a way. They're going to sell what they need to, to get it. And so it's procrastination in a certain area. That's the question, which is letting people in and telling your story, Nelson, so that you can get the healing you need, the right kind of comfort so that drugs and alcohol are no longer your main source of comfort. Yeah. There's really three necessary things here that you need, Nelson. And and I'd love to say a different way, but there's not, at least that I'm aware of. And let me just say in this area, I'm aware of a lot. (laughs) So you need treatment. It's got to happen. So stay on the line. We're going to get you connected with one of our treatment centers. The other thing that you're going to need is sustainable recovery. And sustainable recovery is getting involved in a 12-step group. That could be a life recovery group. That could be what I'd recommend is AA, NA, something along those lines. And then the other key, key component is you're going to need to go to work on your trauma. Because the pain in your life from your childhood is still creating a tremendous amount of fear, chaos, and most importantly, or powerfully, shame. And so there is treatment for that. There is programs for this. I want to encourage you with that. We're going to send you a copy of the Life Recovery Bible as well as a Life Recovery Workbook. I want you to jump into that. Take it seriously. Take our recommendations seriously because we want you 
and, and we want your heart and your mind and your soul to be on a good path towards sobriety, healing, and ultimately health. So Lucha para tu sanación, porque Dios te quiere muchísimo, Nelson. Gracias por haber llamado. Thank you so much for that, Alice. I will not say that I am completely jealous that you know Spanish fluently, <laughs> but that is awesome. A lot of flashcards went into <laughs> that sentence. I love, that. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for that. It's beautiful. And we're going to go right back to the phones. We're going to go to Julie listening in Charlotte, North Carolina on Sirius XM. Julie, are you there? Um, hi. Yes, I'm here. All right. What's going on today? So... I've been separated from my husband since June of last year. We've been mm. married like 14 years. He's an alcoholic. We've been separated several times. And finally, I was just like hit the end of my rope and I was like, I'm done. Well, then he started doing active recovery, mm. going to meetings, really wanting to change. And now since there's been some time passing, I'm going into life recovery groups, which I have been. Awesome. I'm just like second guessing my my decision did am i doing the right thing by proceeding with the divorce i mean so i just wondered that is the question yeah, okay that's a great question and and obviously there might be a, a few more bits of information we need in that but i want to start here when a person and this is not everyone but this is probably most of us when we make a decision for instance to end something as significant as marriage then our heart makes a transition. It kind of goes, I say it goes kind of cold and dark to that particular thing because it, it almost necessarily has to do that. Uh, warming up a cold heart is really hard and waking up a dark heart is really hard, but it's not impossible. But what I would encourage you is to see is is for you to be able to do the work to identify in yourself, whether it be your husband who you're separated from, or whether it be anyone else, what do I need in marriage? What do I need in a partner? And that can help you start to identify the things that will warm up and wake up the heart. And you said that you guys are separated um, but the question is, did you do the right thing in terms of divorce? Have you filed for divorce? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And like the other thing too is he's he's like emotionally unavailable, and that's like a big issue too for me because do, there was yeah. Do, do you two have children, and how old are they? We um, both had children like of our own, so. No mm -hmm. children um, together. And they're grown. Okay. Yeah, okay. correct. And Julie, was he ever unfaithful to you in addition to all the rest that he did? No, he wasn't. But there was a little, um, like, inf like not like a little incident with a little too much closeness with someone. More like an emotional affair? Yeah. Yeah. Can I rephrase? Like, can, can I can I rephrase that? There was a big incident with way too much it was emotional clo closeness. Don't minimize it. Yeah. Well, but, it it was physical closeness, and oh. it was a big deal, and that's the first time we separated. Okay. So How, yeah, you, you, it's interesting. You tried to to minimize it there. There was a little incident. Mm -hmm. Well, have mm -hmm. you have you not? address that so i when we separated at that time i did address it okay but you know even like in the past year or so he he had said well it's not like i was unfaithful or anything okay so so he minimized so it. he minimized it and you you yeah that, it's part of why you are um maybe considering continuing to move on with the divorce <laughs> you don't feel hurt or seen by him even though he's doing mm -hmm. work now do you feel a, a sense of emotional safety with him and an emo emotional connection and attunement with him no not at all like we're not communicating oh can i just ask what's in the way like so so you're now questioning because he's sober 
or because he's working a recovery program, did you make the right decision? And is he yes. is he asking and you to stop and to come back into the marriage? He did. So he did when I said I want a divorce and like a couple weeks went by and then he came back and said, hey, let's go to counseling. Let's do this. And I said, I've been asking you this for years. So no, you go do your own counseling. Mm-hmm. But I just like, I'm just like worried that is it biblical for me to move forward with divorce? Is it wrong? Like, I guess that's part of the question, too. So you but, probably yeah. you probably know that the two biblical permissions for divorce, allowances for divorce, are infidelity and abandonment by an unbelieving spouse. And God also mm-hmm. wants repentance. And if there is a repentance on the side of the perpetrating spouse, that biblically he seems to want us to wait and see what pans out with that. But wait and see with caution and with distance, the necessary amount of distance to keep you safe. God hates divorce because divorce, even when it's necessary, brings about suffering. It just always causes Mm -hmm. some level of suffering, even if it's necessary. And so he always wants us to consider divorce with so much caution because he wants to protect us from more suffering. And so as your husband enters into recovery, there probably should be a period of waiting to see how far he takes it to know what kind of a man is he becoming. But unfortunately, we see that even months and months of progress and recovery, it doesn't guarantee that a person is gonna stick with it. It doesn't guarantee character change. So waiting to see what happens can be a long wait. And the couples therapy idea may uh, be beneficial in that wherever you go, there you are. And who you are um, in relationship, intimate relationship with another person can really be revealed in that couple's therapy with the husband. Because often the things that are challenging or, or, or it work we need to do comes out in our marriage. And so he may be the person that brings those things out in you and that therapist can work through those things. It's not always working towards reconciliation. Mm-hmm. Some Sometimes the therapy is working towards a healthy separation. Well, and therapy can be clarifying, Mm -hmm. very clarifying as well. Julie, there's a few more thoughts I want to share with you, but uh, we're going to go to a break here pretty soon. But as you've heard with Lisa, as you've heard with Julie, as you've heard with too many women, too many wives, is that sexual betrayal is real and it's painful and it needs recovery. We, if, if you're wondering if this fits you, visit our Re- Restore event page at newlife.com. You can download a copy to see if this is, in, is what you're experiencing because Restored Workshop is for you. We're going to be back right after this. We all face days where life throws us a curveball and our routines or plans get disrupted things we wanted to do are forced to take a backseat to the unexpected demands of the day. If you normally listen to New Life Live on a radio station, well, you might not be able to that day. And on these hectic days when you're feeling stressed or frazzled, hearing the sound of counsel given on New Life Live is just what you need to navigate the unexpected things of life. Every time I'm troubled or I have a problem, I'll cut on New Life. And there's always always something that is said that is helpful to me. By listening, I have learned more than I can ever express about how God wants me to live. Download the New Life app for the easiest way to listen wherever you are and at a time that's convenient for you. Or watch the show on our YouTube channel. You can even subscribe to our podcast from your favorite podcast provider. You never have to miss a day of New Life. Wherever you are, we are. Daniel Grossman on coaching. Coaches are really focused on the future and helping people to develop those skills and those strategies to help them move forward in their life. A coach really partners with you to focus on things like personal growth or health goals, spiritual growth, helping you develop in your career or possibly strengthening your relationships or maybe even breaking free from a negative pattern. If you need a coach for life, your career, relationships, your health and fitness, leadership and more, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. Coaches use different techniques. Some like to use strategic questions and accountability ultimately empowering you to take those next steps towards your goals. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and talk to us about getting a new life coach today. 
I really believe that everyone can use a coach in their corner. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back to New Life Live. And we are talking with Julie in Charlotte, North Carolina. And, and Julie, it sounds like, as I was mentioning before, in your heart and in your mind, the decision's made. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, I made the decision. Okay. And and you're looking for confirmation and, and this is okay. And, and, and to Alice's point, it, it is good to make sure that we vet this out mm-hmm. and we seek counsel and we see it from different angles. But I, and also to Alice's point on that, what I would want to infer to you is that it doesn't seem as if recovery has made him a better partner. Mm-hmm. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. So, what I would encourage you as you continue down this pathway is still do the work as Jackie was saying, you know, maybe get into couples counseling, get clarification on what's going on here. And the clarification that I would want for you is to really identify here is exactly what it means to be married to me. And it doesn't mean that we have these high impossible standards, but it does mean that we have some non-negotiable needs that have to be met. Emotional availability, for instance, would be one of those things. So I just want to encourage you down that road, Julie, and and, and we're going to send you a copy of Steve's book, Take Your Life Back. And, and I think that that really helps clarify for yourself and in this process of what it means for you to be well-connected with yourself, setting really good boundaries, and moving forward with what you need in your life. And I'd also give him a copy, your husband, a copy of Worthy of Her Trust. Yeah. Have, give him a couple days. Read it. Get back to me. Tell me if you're willing to live by what's in this book or not. That would be revealing. That's really, really good. So, Julie, thank you so much for calling in today. We we appreciate you. Um, we appreciate your, your journey and your desire to do what is right by you and right by God. Right now, we're going to go to one of our calls previously with Steve and John and hear from the caller and hear from their wisdom. Let's go over here to Mary. She's calling all the way from Henderson, Tennessee, WDNX. That's the station. Hi, Mary. Welcome to New Life. Well, hi. Thank you for taking my call. Certainly. What's going on? You guys are awesome. Um, I have a question. Um, First of all, uh, let me give you just a little bit of my background. Mm -hmm. Um, I was raised Amish, born Amish, raised Mennonite, and... uh, about 10 years ago, I left all of that and um, went to uh, Assembly of God Church. Okay. And now that has broke all into pieces. All right. And so I've got a lot of questions going on. Okay. And my question is, how do we know that the Bible is inspired and everything in there is to be obeyed rather than it just being a history book? Okay. Mary, have you done any study on that question already? Yes, I have. And what have you done? I have just, I look at the big picture of everything in this world, and I see all this uh, religion that divides and hurts people. And I have pretty much come to the conclusion that um, that man compiled the Bible together like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, they also were human, and it was done after Jesus' time. It was not, you know... And I think it's more actually that's not true. The Bible is written. The Bible is written both before and after Jesus' time. But let's keep going. And I just, I just see that if we, if we're going to take it as every word in there, if God had a way for us to live, and He, He made us, He knows how we are. He knows no two people look at read something and see it the same way. Would He not have just made a list of rules and black and white and say do this, so we don't have all this? confusion and hurting and fighting and everything going on well he did that though you know he made that list but where is it in well it's life? that he did that uh, that list the ten commandments there see right and um and it just didn't didn't work out that way seemed like there was more fighting because yes. um because that list kind of revealed human nature and character well the religious people fight more than the ones that don't have religion 
and there and people that don't have religion seem to be nicer than the ones that have it. So obviously, that's interesting, not- isn't it? How once you you decide that you're going to stand for something, seems like you kind of come under greater attack and end up in greater conflict. If you're not uh, aspiring or moving towards something, you don't really have conflict inside. You know what I mean? You just go and right. do it. You just do it. But isn't like people, God just all about love? Is it not just, isn't that what he sent Jesus for? And to well, all the dogs yes, and, and just love each other? But see, here's the thing. What I think you you kind of fall in this thing about not wanting all the uncomfortable stuff in the Bible, but just the love stuff. And you could just end up with a little love leaflet. Well, love is what makes the world go around. It's what Jesus was all about. Isn't that all he ever taught? Isn't that, didn't he say that if you love God and love your neighbor, that's all you need to know? Well, he didn't say all. He said that's a, you know, that's a real priority there. Uh, And it'd be great if that's all there was to it. But Jesus said a lot of other things too. Things like deny yourself, take up your cross. Ooh, you know, some really, Right, but he's going to decide what he meant by that. Well, there are a lot of things like that uh, that seem to be fairly clear no matter what dialect or language or interpretation that you use. Now, there are things that are not so clear, but that's where we have to, to use the mind that he gave us to study it to come up with the best uh, interpretation, especially in light of all the other truth that's in Scripture. John, yeah. go uh, ahead. Mary, by the way, I'm so glad you're asking these questions because so many people either haven't or need to study it, struggle with them, and I always appreciate that. Are you open to other realities besides your own conclusions at this point or not? Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of uh, books I want you to look at. One is called um, The Apologetics Study Bible, A-P-O-L-O-G-E-T-I-C-S. Some of the smartest guys in the Christian world, friends of ours, wrote it, uh-huh. and it talks about why the, we believe the Bible is true faith-wise, archaeology-wise, history-wise, philosophically-wise. Uh-huh. The Apologetic Study Bible is really good. And also, um, The Case for Christ, which is by Lee Strobel, which is a wonderful uh-huh. book on our faith. And there's a case for Christ. There's a case for uh, the Creator. There's mm-hmm. another one that's got it in there. There are several books that can really And your be book, helpful. Being Christian, is really good too, Steve. Well, thanks for just mentioning that off the top of your head after I held up that piece of paper. So, uh, Mary, front. here's the thing is, I always tell people, I understand that question. So do two things. Go to God and say, God, I need to know reality. I just want to make this up. And yeah. if, if this is true, God, you tell me. And if it's not, you tell me. And then you study what some really smart people say about the Bible. I did that many years ago. And I came down to, I believe the Bible is true. And I, but I had to do that sort of, I'm open to reality prayer. So I want you to do that. You know, a lot of the confusion would not be there if, if we were uh, not speaking English and we either spoke Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic Aramaic or both or all three. (laughs) See, then we wouldn't have even, well, even in, when it was translated into the Latin, it, it became conf- more confusing than the original scripture. Right. But I tell you, I'm going to send you, because uh, we can send that to you, being Christian, I think you're, there's some great stuff in here that's going to clear that issue up specifically. What wisdom, again, all of these resources. And what, what a great question, you know, and I just find so many times that my desire in life is to end the dilemma that we experience as human beings. What I find in the wisdom of God is the ability to enter into the dilemma with higher truths and higher realities and, and better meanings. And so um, if there's ways in which we can help you, we have a storehouse of resources. You can go to newlife.com or give us a call. We'd love to help you out. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Jackie Mack, Dr. Alice Benton. Thank you for your friendship and your wisdom and all that you have to offer. Thank you for being with us. Have a blessed day. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. 
please join us again on Monday for New Life Live. Thanks for watching today. We love helping people. I hope you sense that. And we know that there's always hope if you find the right resource. Now, if something we've said that somebody else applies to you, that's fantastic. That's what we're hoping for. But also, if you want to join us directly, you can call 1-800-229-3000 between 1 and 3 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the best times to get through. And while you're here on YouTube, check out these other videos that we've done to help people see where they could grow or a different path to take. And if you do that, would you give us a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to this channel. There are many ways that we can help you outside of the radio program, and it's very hard for some to pick up a phone and dial 1-800-NEW-LIFE, but when you do, we put you in touch with somebody who cares about you, knows all the resources out there, and they're going to find the best for you. There is no reason to struggle alone. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you'll invite somebody else to come and join that maybe needs just a little bit of help along the way. I'll see you next time.